Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, Nuts for Art, and I'm going to continue reading from our book, Population Control Through Nuclear Pollution. We're almost at the end. We're on page 208, and we are in, uh, what chapter, 11 or 12, I think this is chapter 11, Moral and Social Responsibility of Scientists and Science. And... We are in a new subtitle called The Arrogant Self-Esteem of Scientists. No shit, Sherlock. So I guess that's where we're at. I'm going to keep reading. I'm going to press on. I have to say, this isn't so easy these days sometimes. Okay, here we go. Atomic energy, peaceful and military, provides gross and extremely important examples of what happens to scientists, technologists. We have had the opportunity to, to live through, at close contact, experience with both examples. One of the characteristics of self-worship as an idol is, of course, the development of a feeling of omnipotence. And with this comes the arrogance that suggests no self-examination is necessary. With this arrogance, there is never a requirement to ask, are we asking the right questions? Are we beginning at the beginning of the story? Or in our arrogant self-esteem, are we accepting premises without examination and then winding down an inevitable path to unseen but terribly real disaster in human values? I think the answer to that right now would be yes, actually. Back to his writing. The real atomic era, of course, began in 1945 with the explosions of atomic bombs over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Man had, at last, unlocked nature's secrets to enormous stories of available energy. I'm sorry, unlocked nature's secrets to enormous stores of available energy. It is not an unreasonable step to the statement that these vast energy resources will now be applied to the betterment of life on Earth. Yet along with these stores of energy come byproducts capable of eradicating essentially every form of life on Earth. Feels like that's where we're headed, right? Were there a lesser degree of arrogant assumption of omnipotence? Scientists and technologists might have asked the question, is there any way to utilize these riches of energy truly for man's benefit? Or may these byproducts, these radioactive poisons, thereby create a hell on earth for man and other living creatures? But this question is not asked. And with righteous self-assurance, we press forward towards widespread use of atomic technology. Our experts in the biological and medical sciences will assuredly, through dedication and well-financed efforts, enable us to cope with any and all the problems which arise. And what is the first problem and the first compromise? Obviously, how careful we must be in keeping the byproducts from intersection, intersection with the biosphere, man, animal, and plants. And when we say this is the first problem, we mean precisely this. It is and should be the first problem, but it hasn't. Oh, wow. Okay. For substances of fantastic potential for injury to life, understanding of such potential in all its short and long-term ramifications would seem to be the first step. But such understanding comes only with careful, patient study, reflection, and further study. With some humility, one realizes that beyond our accumulated knowledge at any particular time, there may be a vast sea of ignorance. Uh-huh, I think we're drowning in that sea right now, folks. Does this lead or has it led to an appropriate degree of caution on the part of biological scientists involved in atomic energy? We consider the answer to be a resounding no. 
and we hasten to add that earlier in our own careers, we were certainly as culpable as any other biological scientist in this regard. We surely shared unwittingly the arrogance of assumed omnipotence of science and scientists. Progress, reasoned the biological scientists, must be made. Progress has brought us every good thing in life, and further, all hazards, all life has hazards. We simply learn to cope with them. And by our tireless and devoted efforts, we will cope with the hazards of technology's poisonous byproducts. But such tireless efforts will come later. Today, we must provide atomic technology with a set of rules or guidelines containing how much exposure we shall allow human beings to receive from radioactive byproducts as atomic technology advances. New subtitle, Economy More Important Than Health. How much is acceptable? Few people are so callous as to consider an obviously fatal exposure as acceptable. Uh, not anymore, sir. That seems to be the standard. They're fucking frying us. Indeed, we can be assured that such disrespect for life characterizes none of the biological scientists involved. Not anymore. A dilemma is perceived. Our knowledge is scant. Our ignorance is large. But a set of ground rules are being clamored for by the atomic developers. Can we tell them to await acquisition of the knowledge? Can we tell them to conduct their technology with no exposure to humans to radioactive byproducts? How will we answer their charge that such a requirement might, quote, price atomic technology out of business, unquote? It sure the fuck ought to. Ugh. We must, say the omnipotent biological scientist, be realistic. We must operate in the real world, cognizant of the facts of life, or could it be death? And so, from a melange of knowledge plus ignorance, a set of radiation exposure standards are arrived at and proclaimed as, quote, acceptable, unquote. Of course, those who promulgate such standards are sincere. Of course, they work hard and would be horrified to feel they were harming their fellow men. But where is the moral self-questioning, the responsibility for actions that justify saying, quote, we must live with the facts of life, and the facts of life are that the atomic technology must proceed efficiently and economically, unquote. Economically? For whom? And for what goals? At what cost in life or the future of life on earth? The word is magic. We simply must proceed economically without delving too deeply into the meaning of the word. Listen to the pronouncement of the International Commission of Radiological Protection as recently as 1958 in justifying the standards they recommend for human exposure to radiation as acceptable. The, com the commission believes that this level, 5 rems per generation, that's way fucking low from what we have now, folks. The commission believes that this level, 5 rems per generation, provides reasonable latitude for the expansion of atomic energy programs in the foreseeable future. Reasonable latitude for the expansion of atomic energy programs. What we must really ask, does reasonable latitude mean? Unfortunately, it relates to the word economically, or expressed other words, otherwise, what won't annoy the enterprising technologist too much with costly constraints to protect human life. Is there any other interpretation possible? But note the qualifications of the ICRP it, as the ICRP admits its insecurity about the size of the risk factor. Quote, it should be emphasized that the limit may not in fact represent a proper balance between harm and probable benefit because of the uncertainty in assessing the risks and benefits that would justify the exposure. Unquote. These people make my fucking head spin, I swear to God. 
We have here an admission that a decision has been made to allow injury to man's greatest treasure, his genetic inheritance, without knowledge of the magnitude of such injury. For what do we accept this unknown risk? For, quote, probable benefits, unquote, to whom? We shall view the common justification for this choice of permissible genetic harm so often expounded by biological scientists in the atomic field. I'm going to read that again. How shall we view the common justification for this choice of permissible genetic harm so often expounded by biological scientists in the atomic field? Man, they tell us, has managed to get where he is by receiving approximately 3 to 5 rams per generation from natural radiation sources. Surely, adding an exposure equal in size will not be serious. Holy fuck, these fuckers, they make me so angry. This is where I start cussing, you guys. I'm sorry, I'll get back to reading. When will we know if this statement seals the irreversible, irreversible doom of the human species? Uh, I think that's 3.11.11. It's too late by the time the species disappears. Where is the evidence beyond self-pious reassurance that this does not constitute a prescription for genocide? New subtitle. Loss of responsibility to mankind. One cannot criticize the sea of arrogance, the gaps in our knowledge. Let me read that again. One cannot criticize the sea of ignorance, the gaps in our knowledge. But what shall one say about scientists setting a policy permitting radiation of hundreds of millions of humans, an experience never before encountered, with the justification of, quote, providing reasonable latitude for the expansion of atomic energy programs, unquote. The answer is simple. These scientists have learned the, quote, facts of life, unquote, all too well. But they were and are of the highest motivation by usual standards. Are usual standards good enough? We must answer with an unqualified no. For the facts of life will indeed be the facts of death if scientists fail to realize the meaning of their overt and covert subscription to their own omnipotence. Catherine Higley. Fuck. Everybody in the Atomic Energy Commission, you stupid bastards. Once our recent experience with human frailty in Nazi Germany, our, excuse me, our recent experience with human frailty in, in Nazi Germany should certainly have taught us the lessons we ostensibly taught the world at Nuremberg. We didn't teach jack shit at Nuremberg. We had, what do you call that, retribution. We murdered the people we wanted to murder. A higher law, a higher morality, we told the world, exists. It must be adhered to by men, no matter what orders or directions are given to them by governmental or other superiors. They must, we said then, obey that higher law, responsibility to their fellow humans and men's larger goals. Uh, so can we indict Dick Cheney and throw George Bush in jail and Condoleezza Rice and you and who else? I don't know, Ashcroft? Actually, Ashcroft tried to hang on, but he still had a hand in it. Has that lesson been lost? Lost especially upon scientists and technologists? We believe it has, as evident by Fukushima. All the more cruelly so because the public, astounded by the magnificent accomplishments of science and technologies, has been willing to place its faith in such men. Ha, never realizing that the higher law might be the, quote, orderly and economic, unquote, development of a particular technology. We must examine this further if we are truly to appreciate the ultimate and highly significant ramifications. 
The statement above was made by the ICRP in 1958, and shortly thereafter the U.S. Federal Radiation Council adopted these suggestions for radiation standards to apply to, quote, peaceful, unquote, development of atomic energy. And since then, the evaluation of our, quote, sea of ignorance, unquote, biologically and medically has been fantastic. After the standards were set, a whole new field of medical importance developed, almost entirely in the period beyond 1960, the field of human cytogenetics or of human chromosomes. The body of medical knowledge has accumulated rapidly during the 1960-70 decade, and while impressive in its accomplishments, it is vitally more impressive by the vistas as yet undiscovered facts of, of importance of human health and disease. And we're far along that line now, folks. We know way more about it than we do now. And we know that radiation is one of the worst killers in the world. In these chromosomes are carried all the information in genes which instruct a fertilized ovum to become a human being. And these chromosomes are visibly injured by exceeding small amounts of radiation. There are 46 chromosomes in every human cell. 23 from the mother, 23 from the father. At this writing, no one knows A, what crucial biological genetic information is carried by each of the 46 chromosomes? Or B, how sensitive each chromosome is to breakage by ionizing radiation? Or C, what the implications are for small chromosomal breaks and hence losses of chromosome pieces by radiation in sperm or ovum precursor cells? We actually know those answers now, folks, and it's not good. What will we do to the fertility? What will this mean for disease and defects in future generations? How many such broken chromosomes are consistent with producing new generations of all of humans at all? Let's see how far we have to go. I think I'll end here. I know I'm not reading very well. I am so angry about the lies of the science technologists and these people. I am beyond dumbfounded. Uh, I guess the fire in Chernobyl is over because we haven't heard anything. Maybe, maybe not. Um, Fukushima seems to be fucking falling apart completely. People are getting sick, skin rashes. I keep getting the skin rash above my mouth. I went to Washington in the beginning of the year and I keep getting this like weird thing. A friend of mine has the same thing on his face right here. Mm, I know a bunch of children here in Oregon that have red eyes. They don't have pink eye, but they have something like red eye. And they're saying it's the pollen. Maybe it is. I think that's my anger is just the complete blanket lies. And it really gets to me. So... I'll stop here, you guys. Um, I got to do some tapping, that's for sure. <laughs> so, ciao. Put your courage feet on. Put your thinking caps on. And look, let's don't give up on pressuring these fucking politicians. You know, even if you don't vote, call them up and poke them in the eye and tell them, stop. We need the truth about Fukushima. We don't need the TPP. We don't need the TPA. We don't need more radiation. We don't need more nuclear. We need more peace. We need more love. We need more honesty. We want humanity to come back to being who they are, human beings, caring for each other, loving each other, building families that stay together, helping our old people, helping the infirm. The name calling has got to stop. So, ciao, you guys. Talk to you later.